Welcome to Crawl Daddy's Custom Crankbaits. Tonight I'm going to do something just a little bit different. I'm trying to help some of the people who sent me messages who's trying to get into the hobby and they are not that experienced on what they're doing. So tonight I kind of figured I would just do something simple to give them an idea of what's going on. Um, you don't need a high dollar airbrush. This is a master um, G266. Um, you can buy just airbrush, I think around $21, $22, something like that uh, from Global Inc. Um, you can also find them on eBay, Amazon. But anyway, when you, your airbrush, a dual action airbrush is, you push down and pull back for your paint. Um, it's best just to get you a piece of paper and see what it's gonna do. For a fine line, you know, most of the time you get close and just you can put in your lines or whatever you want to do. The further you pull back on that trigger, the more paint you're going to get. So then you can go wide by pulling back on the trigger. You want to go narrow, just the closer you get, you can go. Um, if you want to get real fine, I mean, you can tone this brush down to get real fine, but for doing baits, you don't need that. Um, but as I said, you, you have to just learn the, the pattern that, that it's spraying. But the further I pull this back, the more paint is going to come out. If you have your paint too thin, it's going to do that. If you when, you when you start painting, it's going to splatter or spider web. Uh, I did that just by pulling too much, putting too much air pulling too much paint instead of doing it easy. So like I said, you just have to learn your airbrush and, and what you want to do. But that's the trick is learning this tr trigger right here. If you pull back and you got it pressed down, you got your air coming through and you're pulling back and no paint's coming through, most likely your paint's too thick. It's not going to go through the needle or bypass the needle. If you got it too thin, it's going to spider web on you. It's just going, when you trying to spray, it's just going to do this number on you and just go all over the place. It's best. This is black ink. It's all that's in here. Um, you can just, you know, play around with it. Uh, as I said, the more you pull back, the wider the, the, the paint's going to be. Um, but that's the basics of an airbrush. It's just learning to play with it. I'm gonna clean this out real quick and, and just do a quick, easy two-step, I think it is, or maybe three-step uh, crankbait. Uh, it, it's a scheme or a color that you can just practice on and play on and just gives you the feel of the airbrush. That's all it's gonna do. Um, all I, I've, I've primed it and I put a coat of uh, pearl silver on it. Um, this is a uh, Liquitex, whoops, got the wrong one. It's behind the bottle. This is Liquitex Sap Green. You can get it at, uh, I think Hobby Lobby used to carry it, Michael's used to carry it, but if not, you can find it on eBay. Uh, it will last a long time. I've had this bottle for a long time and I spilt, tumped it over and spilt 90% of it, but I still have a lot left. Put you a little bit in the airbrush. It only takes a couple of drops. Just put in the airbrush. These spray pretty well. Normally you don't have to thin them or do nothing to them. Just, just airbrush and paint. The sap greens and, and your uh, sepias, they will push on you sometimes because it, it's a translucent paint or ink. Uh, so you really have to put light coats on it. But that's going to give you a practice area to do this. All I'm going to do is, is paint a simple shad color 
Um, and I'm using this green. I'm just going to come lightly over the back. I'm going to allow the paint to fall over the sides on the shoulder of the bait. And you just come back and forth and just darken it. If you see it building up there, look where it's like looking wet or something. Stop. Get your hair dryer. He said it. And start doing it again. And and what what I'm doing, I'm building up the green over the back, but it's allowing to come down the sides and it turns it, gives you kind of a, a goldy looking color on the side or, you know, because these paints or these inks are translucent. So you're gonna get that sheen from that silver. But as I said, you just build it up. If you do this bait, it just allows you to learn control of your airbrush. That's all it's doing is a basic, simple bait to paint. But when you do them, they really look nice. And they will catch fish. But there, I mean, it's just, I've got a darker back. You see that it gives you kind of a goldish looking tint or, you know, on the sides of it. And that's all you want. If you want to get a little bit more of that coppery look or whatever color that is, I'm colorblind as a bat, but just come out here and just lightly dust it. Come around the eyes a little bit. And you can get that same look. And then you can deepen your eyes. And I, I've got fairly little paint coming out. Not much at all, I, you know. And all I'm going to do is just sit there and just do a circle motion and, and, and get it dark as I want it. Flip it over. Do the same. And coming down on the gill plate just lightly, just until I get to the tone I want. Now I'm going to come around the eyes. darkness I want I look at the back and, and, and that's up to me if I want to add more darkness I can if I want to leave it alone I can I mean it's, it's all your choice on what you want to do I'm gonna come in here in front of the nose and just you know, pile these colors in I'm gonna to choose to go a little darker so all I'm gonna do is go right down the center of the spine I've got about the darkness I want. I'm not going to change. I'm not putting you know more paint or clean my airbrush out. I'm going to turn around and take black ink. Put maybe one drop in there. You can hold your needle and put back pressure, lightly do it, and it's gonna bubble and mix your paint up for you. And just hold it down until you get your spray. Tip dry is when uh, your paint starts drying on your needle. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can take a Q-tip, is put you some alcohol on it. Just rotate that around on your needle, clean your needle, or you make you a cup with water in it, with foam in it, and just dab it in there so you're not damaging your needle. Hit it, get the water off, and you're good to go. Now all I'm gonna do is come right here and I'm gonna darken my eyes a little bit. I'm barely pushing down and pulling back at the same time just to get the paint to start coming through. The 
it's all about control. Darken my eyes. Now I want to darken this nose part here. So what you do is just start on the bill, come up, and as you're coming off the bait, just pull backwards on it or back from the bait, and it gives us a feather effect so you're not getting that darkness all the way through it. All I did was darken the nose. That's what I want. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna get my shad dot. I line it to the back of the eye, to the center of the eye. Put in my shad dot, spin her over, same thing. Put this on the back of the eye, to the center of the eye. There's your shad dot. This bait is really complete. That gives you a, a really nice shad uh, bait. Um, and you can do this in deep divers. This is a medium diving. You can do it square bills. You can do whatever you want to. And this is a great shad color to get started with. All I'm gonna do now is come in. Grab my eyes. I'm gonna go with these gold eyes. Take my knife, peel it up. Put it in place, hold it there, pull it out. You got your eye in. Spin it around. Same thing, just get your eye in place. And boom, just pull back on it. There, I, I, I scraped the paint just a little bit when I pulled the knife back, but it's no big deal. I got air, uh, paint or ink in my airbrush. I'm gonna stick a toothpick in there, come up here. And cover it up. Normally I do not clear coat after I paint. Um, but tonight I'm gonna to go ahead and show you how I clear coat, which is really simple. I got a piece of plastic. I've got a rack sets right here in front of me. So when, I, when I'm done, I dip them, hang them to dry. Um, got my wires already cut. There's my drip wire. My hanging wire. All you want to do now is come in and take the tape off. Be careful taking the tape off. I'm going to go ahead and remove it from this holder. Just pull your tape off. Take your tape aside, move this out of my way, and we'll take my clear. This is KBS clear. Some people use KBS, I use KBS. It's quick, it's easy. Um, there's pros and cons on, on it, but some guys use epoxies, but I'm gonna go with KBS. Get your hook, hook it through your bill. Now it's ready to dip. Just take it, slowly dip it in. You can submerge the bill and everything. I let it set for a second, kind of move it around a little bit. We'll let her come up. Take your time, just pull it slowly out. Put your drip wire on. 
I'm going to get this over here just so you can kind of see it better. I'm just letting it drip. Don't be in a hurry. But there's your bait. It gives you a nice finish and, and that color just pops once you put it clear on it. But that is one of the simplest and easiest way. So like right here, this is why a lot of people don't like KBS. There's a little tiny air bubble right there. I'm just gonna take a tooth uh, toothpick, kind of move it around a little bit and let her pop. But that is it. That's as simple as you can get. That's a shad color, will catch fish. But it's a good bait to learn control of your airbrush. Once it's dipped, hang it to dry and don't drop it just like I did. I'll re dip it. We just have to put that on the bloopers. But anyway, I'm gonna just take it and try again and hang it. Now it's hanging to dry. Done with your KBS, pull the saran wrap down, get your lid, put it on tightly, seal it, put it out of your way, you're done. Um, I hope this helped you beginners out some who's asked me to do a little video on how to's and stuff. Uh, feel free anytime. You, know, you can find me on Facebook uh, under Whitney Thompson, uh, or you can find me under Crawl Daddy's. I have a page there too under Crawl Daddy's Custom Baits. Shoot me a message. I don't mind helping, I don't mind answering questions. So if you have questions or want something, you know, uh, any information, I, I'm more than glad to help anybody I can because this is a fun hobby. It can be aggravating, trying to learn, trying to learn how to do your airbrush. But the key is get you an airbrush without breaking your bank. Play with it, learn how to use the airbrush, how to mix your paints and you save yourself a lot of headaches. But anyway, that's all I got tonight for Crawl Daddy's Custom Crankbaits. Um, please uh, like and um, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Crawl Daddy's Custom Baits. Thank you.